Okay, today we're going to start out talking about demonology. Does anyone know what demonology is? What is demonology? Because me and Bishop, actually, we already talked about this. What is it, Apostle? Yeah, demonology is the study of demons. And I'm going to jump right in because we worship quite a bit today. So I want to go ahead and get right into the lesson. And the first subject we're going to talk about is the worship of demons. And I'm telling you, y'all, this first subject we're about to cover, I'm telling you, you really better take notes. Because you're about to find out about demons and how do y'all pray for the bishop. Pray for your bishop because the enemy don't like what I'm about to teach you. So please cover me and pray for me. If you love me, you will cover me and pray for me. But we're going to run up. He's about to get exposed. First thing we're going to talk about is the worship of demons. And if you ever took notes in any of my classes, today is the day you got to write down everything I'm saying so you will really know. First thing we're going to talk about is the worship of demons. When Israel, and I'm going to talk slow too, and if I need to repeat something, y'all say repeat it. When Israel finally prepared to enter the promised land, God gave definite instructions for the teaching anointing. When Israel finally prepared to enter the promised land, see, I'm, I'm a professor that don't mind repeating myself. When I was in school, the professors, they didn't care. They say, hey, if y'all miss it, y'all miss it. They wouldn't repeat it. But I walk in love. I don't do that. I don't do that. So when Israel finally prepared to enter the promised land, God gave definite, D-E-F-I-N-I-T-E. -E. God gave definite instructions regarding their relationship to the occult religions of Canaan. Good God Almighty. Lord have mercy. I'm telling y'all, this class ain't for babes in Christ. I will humbly tell you, if, if, if people want to come to this class, you got to find out where they are in their relationship with God. Because this is meat. This is, not, this is not milk. These classes are not for babes in Christ. Because there was a, a cult of religions in Canaan. And to back that up in scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Y'all know Bishop gonna back up everything with scripture. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, I love y'all, man. I really do, man. I'm telling you. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Deuteronomy 18 and 19. So what Paul does in Pauline theology, Paul reiterates. This is what he does. He reiterates R-E-I-T-E-R-A-T-E-S. Paul reiterates R-E-I-T-E-R-A-T-E-S. Paul reiterates. Watch this. This is what he does in the Old Testament, y'all. I'm about to show y'all something in the New Testament and how the scripture correlates with the Old Testament. How this Greek language correlates with the Hebrew language. So what Paul does, Paul reiterates Bishop Atkins. He reiterates the Old Testament. Watch this. To abstain from demonic worship. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I wish everybody was here. Paul reiterates the Old Testament command. The Old Testament, it was the Old Testament command to abstain from demonic worship. Watch this. What do you mean by demonic worship? In equally strong language. Let me back that up in scripture. Colossians chapter 2 verse 18. Let no man beguile you of your reward. Colossians 2 and 18. Woman of God. Yeah, Colossians 2 and 18. He says, let no man beguile you of your reward. Man, if I had time to execute that, I'll have y'all running. But I ain't got time to execute on scripture. I'm on assignment today. Y'all excuse me, my daughter, Pastor Bob, my daughter, Apostle Atlas. 
I'm on assignment. So you gotta excuse me. So he said, so he said, that word beguile, if I broke that down, y'all be running, but I don't have time to break these words down. So let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding in those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Colossians 2 and 18. So the next thing we're going to talk about is divination. Divination. Divinations. Colossians 2 and 18, uh, woman of God. Colossians 2 and 18. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You okay? Good, good, good. I told, I told, good. I told a minister here that she missed two weeks. There's a lot of writing, so she yeah. Detail. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. You read on your own. Yeah. 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 Just, just listen. Cause as you listen, it, you know, it all, it all. Tell a bishop. It all makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so divination. D I V I N A T I O N. Divination. Write down the scripture. To back that up, it talks about divination in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 10. Chapter 9, verse 10. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 10. My, uh, woman of God. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 10. I'm going to go ahead and give you the scriptures. Write down Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. You don't have to spell it out. Just abbreviate Ezekiel 21, verse 21. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. You don't have to spell it out. Just abbreviate it. E Z E K. E Z E K. That's Ezekiel. In an abbreviated form. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. And then the next scripture is Psalms 119, verse 9. And this is this is all the script, these scriptures talks about divination. So let's go here. Deuteronomy 19 and 10. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. And Psalms 119, verse 9. Okay, divination. Take notes. Divination was one of the specific practices. You please do take notes. Divination was one of the specific practices named by Moses. <laughs> it was named by Moses in his prohibition. Now I'm going to break that down. P R O H I B I T I. O N. Divination was one of the specific practices named by Moses in his prohibition. Y'all gotta excuse me, I'm flowing in a different anointing today. I'm flowing as a as a doctor, and a professor, and a theologian on you today. So that's the anointing that I'm functioning under. So it was a occult worship. Deuteronomy 19 and 10. So all of this practice, it included, watch this, in this practice. It included the killing of a chicken. <laughs> it included the killing of a chicken or some small animal. And on occasion, it was an observation of its liver to determine the state of affairs in direction of the immediate future. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 21. So essentially, divination, watch this, divination is an ill, 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 legitimate means of trying to determine the will of God. Wow. Wow. Because in the Old Testament, they turned to divination. And they, in their minds, they had to conceptualize that this illegitimate witchcraft divination, they made what was illegitimate legitimate. But just because in their minds that it was legitimate, it was still illegitimate in the eyes of God. And they did it as a means to determine the will of God. 
instead of trusting the true and almighty God. So this would actually apply to other variations of divination, including palmistry. Palmistry. P-A-L-M-I-S-T-R-Y. Palmistry and tea leaf reading. Tea leaf reading. Palmistry. P A L M I S T R Y. Could you unplug my phone back? It's right there. Thank you, my daughter. Thank you so much. Look at the enemy. <laughs> Trying to handle what's about to go for. It's a distraction. It's a distraction, yeah. Because I don't come up, I say the enemy can come through. Take, you know, yes, he can. Use whatever he can to, to stop what God's trying to do. Thank you, my daughter. Unplug it. Unplug it. You can cut my phone off. Please do. So, palmistry and tea leaf reading. So the Christian desiring to know the will of God, watch this, write this down. The Christian should desire to know the will of God by scriptures, not the stars. That's in Psalms chapter 119, verse 9. Chapter 1, 119, verse 9. Thank you, Apostle, for telling me, for helping me. And I may just do this demonology the whole time because this needs to be taught. The next thing we're going to talk about is necromancy. Has anyone heard about necromancy? Have you ever heard that word necromancy? It is spelled N-E-C-R-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Now you're learning about the different names of demons. Y'all, we're going to a high place today. Necromancy. I want you all to repeat after me. Necromancy. N-E-C-R-O-M-A. N C Y necromancy. And what necromancy is, y'all, y'all gotta take these notes because I, I don't know how you guys in the next few weeks you're gonna have to come up and do a presentation and you're gonna have to talk about everything that you learned. I'm gonna take a break and sit back and y'all gonna teach me what I taught y'all. So that's why I'm telling you to take notes. <laughs> necromancy. Here it goes. I'm about to explain that the demon, this demon of necromancy, this demonic spirit of necromancy. Necromancy, what it is, it is a second occult practice. It was a second occult practice. Watch this. And this is what God did to necromancy. God, the one and truly living God, he actually banned necromancy. It was a second occult practice banned by God. Second occult practice that was banned by God. So necromancy, next thing is necromancy is an effort to communicate with and interrogate the dead. Interrogation, interrogating the dead. Good, good job, Bishop. Is an effort to communicate with and interrogate the dead. Why are you going to want to talk with the dead and interrogate the dead? So let's talk about what the Bible teaches about that. We're going to go to some scriptures. As the Bible, repeat after me, say, as the Bible teaches. As the Bible teaches. Okay, because I want to clarify some things. And I hope people watch this. That's why I'm glad it's being recorded. As the Bible teaches, the dead, let me clarify this now, the dead are unable to communicate with the living. I just had to clarify that. Because we got some crazy mojogas that's functioning under, under a necromantical spirit. A necromantical demonic spirit. And I rebuke the demon of necromancy right now. You can, If you're alive, you cannot talk to the dead. You cannot interrogate the dead. Why interrogate something that's no longer a part of the earth realm? And I 
come against the demon of necromaniacalcy. It's an unusual anointing here today, isn't it, y'all? So as the Bible teaches, the dead are unable to communicate with the living. And you know Bishop about to back it up with scripture. Luke chapter 16, verses 27 through 31. We might just stay on demonology today. I hear the Holy Ghost. Yeah, we'll, we'll do soteriology and get back to harmonyology the next time. But we, 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 we're going to deal with the devil today. I'm just going to stay on demonology. Okay, so someone turn to, since we're going to stay on demonology, we can look at some scriptures. Because you know people that be watching, they're like, oh, is he going to back that up with scripture? But y'all know Bishop Campbell. Y'all know I back everything up with the word. Luke chapter 16, verses 27 through 31. When you have it, please turn to it and someone read it. Luke chapter 16, verses 27 through 31. Whoever gets there first, read it. Luke chapter 16, verses 27 through 31. Because I want to deal with that necromantical demon. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, uh -huh. that thou wilt send him to my father's house. Yes. For I have five brethren. Yes. That he may testify unto them. Yes, he did. Lest they also come into this place of torment. Hold on to that mic. And whoever's going to be reading scripture, give them the mic. Amen. Because I want all the hearers on Facebook, YouTube, TV to hear this teaching when, when these scriptures are being read. I start from the beginning. Okay, start over. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. See? Abraham said unto him, uh -huh. They have Moses and the prophets. Yes, keep going. Let them hear them. See? Keep going. And he said, Nay, Father, uh -huh. Abraham, Yes. But if one went into them from the dead, see, keep going. They will repent. Uh huh. And he said unto him, Uh huh. If they hear not Moses, see, and the prophets, yes, neither will they be persuaded, yes. Though one rose mm -hmm. from the dead, uh huh. See, is that it? That is it. Okay. So it only stands. Yeah. Keep cutting the mic off so it won't run the battery. So it only stands to reason. Watch this. Take notes. It only stands to reason that those who claim to have this ability, watch this, because people claim to have this ability to be able to interrogate and talk with the dead, watch this. It only stands to reason that those who claim to have this ability, they are lying. Or they're one one, they're either lying, or either the devil, this demon, has entered into them and deceived them. But in either case, the necromancer sir, was considered an abomination unto the Lord. Turn, turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11 to 12, if you don't believe me. Someone turn to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 11 to 12. And whoever gets there, give them, tell, tell them to turn on the mic and read it in the mic. Is that mic on? Okay, good. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 11 to 12. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 11 to 12. Deuteronomy 18, verses 11 to 12. Deuteronomy 18, verses 11 to 12. You can read it. Hurry up, y'all move quickly because I got quite a bit to teach. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 11 to 12. You got it, Bishop? Oh, yeah. Okay. Deuteronomy 18, verses 11 to 12. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 Bishop, I'll tell you what, you're going to be my reader because I'm on assignment here and I got quite a bit of stuff to cover. So you're going to be my reader. Let's just do that. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 11, 11 to 12. 12. I, the, devil, the devil is alive. Or a charmer, uh -huh. or a counselor, uh -huh. with familiar spirits. Oh, a charmer, a counselor, consultant. Familiar spirits, consulting. Okay, 
necromancer or a wizard oh wizard or a necromancer or necromancer there's that word yeah now a necromantical demon go ahead keep going for all that do these things yes are an abomination oh did, didn't i just say that unto the lord abomination unto who unto the lord abomination unto who unto the lord okay keep going stop right there okay next thing we're going to talk about is magic I'm exposing the enemy today, y'all. Uh, magic. Magic. Cut the mic off, son. Good. Because I'm on assignment today. We ain't going to have everybody trying to read. you just going to be my reader. But this information has to go forth. I'm functioning in my apostolic anointing. I ain't playing right now because the devil is real. The devil not playing with us, and I'm not going to play with him. So that sweet Tommy is gone right now. I'm on assignment. We're going to talk about magic. Okay, magic. The use of magic formulas. You wait on Bishop. Okay. The use of magic formulas and incantations. I N C A N T A T I O N S. The use of magic formulas and incantations were also forbidden. And today, it is popular to distinguish, watch this, between white and black magic. It is popular to distinguish between white and black magic. But as a theologian and other theologians, we agree that both forms of magic, they find their source, white and black magic, they find their source and strength in demon power. I'm going to say that again. White and black magic, the only source that they can bring on board with them is from Satan and not God. And so black magic describes people, this is what people do, this is what black magic does, people who, who function in black magic. They actually, what they do is they employ evil spirits to bring forth calamity and sorrow upon another. Take notes, y'all, because y'all going to be teaching this to me. Whereas those who practice white magic are those who are good people. <laughs> who seem to do good things. That's why you better have a Holy Ghost. You better have some discernment. Because the Bible says everybody that say, Lord, Lord, ain't who they say they are. Everybody that say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus ain't who they serve. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You better have some Holy Ghost and some discernment. They do good things. They do good things for people. Watch this. But here's the snake bite. Here's the snake bite in white magic. This is how the snake will bite you in white magic. This ain't on my nose. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They will help you usually I'm being etymological, the origin, usually not help you, but people who, who function in white magic, they will usually help you for a small price. A small price. Uh, Bishop, you got nothing today. White magicians. Repeat after me, say white magicians. White magicians. White magicians, Bishop, they would include healers. That's why you got to be careful who lay hands on you. Who you allow behind your pulpit. White magicians would include healers. Like a lot of these false... Prophets who have all these healing crusades and 
conjuring up these false miracles. Mm. They include healers, watch this, who attempt to derive their power from good forces. Or witch doctors who perform healing ceremonies upon sick people in which magical incantations are used. And I'm going to say that again. White magicians would include healers who attempt to derive their power from good forces or witch doctors who perform healing ceremonies upon sick people in which magical incantations are used. White magic. White magic should not be confused with tricks that are simple illusions. Lord Bishop, you, you teach it today. White magic should not be confused with tricks that are simple illusions. Because Christian magicians have used tricks as object lessons in order to better communicate their lesson. Christian magicians have used tricks as object lessons in order to better communicate their lesson. Christian magicians have used tricks as object lessons in order to better communicate their lesson. So these tricks, watch this, these tricks, repeat after me, say these tricks. These tricks should not be confused with white magic. These tricks should not be confused with white magic. Because magic requires the intervention of a supernatural force. Magic requires the intervention of a supernatural force. Whereas tricks are, watch this, thank you, Holy Ghost. Tricks are devised by humans and performed by humans. Because God don't play tricks, but tricks are devised by humans and performed by humans. And no eternal force is called upon for assistance. Lord, I stand in awe of you. And so we as biblical scholars, myself as a theologian and a biblical scholar and other biblical scholars, we, we as theologians, we strongly, we, 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 it is a practice of white magic as it is demonic in origin. That's my belief as a theologian. It is demonic in origin. And another theologian says, white magic is black magic in pious masquerade. Watch this. It uses in a magic way the name of God. I'm going to go real slow on this, y'all. Because I want everybody to hear it on the, on the camera. In a way, magic, it uses in a magic way the name of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Along with Bible phrases and terminology. But, there's that conjunction, but is demonic in character. Just because someone says God, 
Christ and the Holy Spirit, they will take what's from God and the Word of God to trap you to make you think that they're really of God. Because it is carried on in many so-called Christian circles. This is demonology, y'all. It is carried on in many so-called Christian circles. Especially in areas of what you call rampant cultism. I'm going to repeat that again. It is carried on in many so-called Christian circles. Especially in areas of rampant cultism. Crazy cultism. Or where sound Bible teaching is lacking. Because where sound, I'm going to tell you something. Where, where there, where in any church, if there's a lacking of sound Bible doctrine teaching, I'm telling you, y'all know what y'all know what's up in there. If sound biblical teaching is lacking in a church, this is the word. So, and the participants are not aware of its demonic nature. Let's go to the scripture. First Timothy chapter four, verses one and two. Write down First Timothy. Chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And 1 John, Bishop, read 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. And then I'm going to tell you to go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. But 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Yes, Bishop. I charge thee therefore be what, what did he say first? He said, I what? He said, I charge thee. He said, I didn't. He didn't say, I tell thee. He said, I what? I charge oh, thee. If I had time to break that down, what that mean in the Greek and what charge really mean, y'all be running. He could have said, there's a, there's a, if, if I say, I tell you something, does it have the same impact on as if I say, I charge you? Amen. I charge you and I tell you is two totally different things. So what did he say? I what? Charge. I what? Charge thee. I what? Charge thee. He didn't say I tell thee. He said I what? Charge. He didn't say I'm saying to you. He said I what? Charge. Charge thee. Keep going. I charge thee. Uh-huh. Therefore. I'm holding you accountable, Timothy. I'm counting on you, Timothy. Keep going. Before God, Lord, I'm teaching, and uh -huh. the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, mm -hmm. who should judge the quick. Stop right there. He said, "I charge you." See, watch this. Paul is so humble. He didn't say, "I charge thee before myself." He said, "I charge thee before who?" Before God. Before who? Before God. And who 